Welcome to this week's episode of the Rutledge Perspective, the Women's History 2022 podcast episodes. And once again, I have some amazing women who are part of my village and without whom I would not be able to make it through all this madness that we've been going through. And so I, you will be able to see all of their bios in the show notes, uh, but I'm going to introduce you to them. For those of you who are just listening, it is going to be a facilitated discussion so that you can actually hear the people that I'm talking to, uh, but you'll get a chance when you see some advertising for to hear a, a little bit more conversation with them that is much more kind of free flowing. But also, if you're just listening, I encourage you to go over to my website, laurelrutledge.com slash podcast, and you can actually see the video and see them in person, virtually, these amazing women who are part of my village. So I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then we are going to get started. So first, there is Cheryl Vienna, and Cheryl is in California and is killing it in all of her nationwide commercials. And then I have Catherine Clack, you will hear me call Kathy, who I've known for a million years, who is also killing it at the Harvard of the South, right? right. right. Ensuring that all of the people who look like us are welcome and safe in that space. And then we have Veronique Shipley, who is an a real estate extraordinaire person, right? One of the very few people mm-hmm. in the country that's doing both residential and commercial. I'm just saying, check her out. Then you have Dorothy Jones, marketing extraordinaire. You guys got to hear her story. Look at her bio, who has been doing incredible things and is now in Tennessee. So we are so glad to have her. And then Lanier Robertson, who was one of the people that also helped me get through my corporate trauma, who is now with a huge chemical company, making sure people are on their game with respect to COVID. And then Joyce Sewing, who is an award-winning journalist that we are so glad to have here with us uh, and who I'm now really nervous about because you know she does this all the time. So (laughs) those are the women (laughs) that I have on this podcast with me. And this is going to be fantabulous. So we're going to jump in and I want to start here. This sister circle started before COVID, not too much before COVID, but before COVID. And it started because Kathy and I actually had a conversation and we were like, you know what? We just need to be around some black women. We just need to be around some black women. And at the time I have a good friend in Ohio who knew Cheryl. So I met Cheryl and we had lunch. And then I have a good friend who I went to grad school with, who's a sorority sister who knew Dorothy and Dorothy was moving to Houston. So she said, okay, you got to meet Dorothy. And so I thought, well, that would be really good because then they can meet Kathy and Kathy's awesome. And then I also knew that Kathy already knew Veronique. Sorry, I am having to deal with my um, system here. And so I knew she knew Veronique and Veronique knew Joy and I'd met Joy. And then I knew Lanier. And so I'm like, you know what? I think this could work. (laughs) So when you guys think about what this has really meant for us to be able to spend some time together just to be, just to chat and chill. Kathy, I'm going to start with you since kind of you're where it started. You were the heartbeat of this. What is it to be able to find these women and meet these women and be able to spend this time? It has been a source of inspiration, a source of unlimited and unyielding support. Um, it's it's funny because whenever you're getting ready to go somewhere, you have that moment of, oh, I really, you know, you just feel like <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. And then as soon as you're in the presence of everyone, it it's like a cloud clears, somebody turns on the light, um, the the gardenias are blooming and wafting <laughs> all through the air. It's just, yeah. it, it you, and you walk away feeling so uplifted, so energized, mm-hmm. just so happy. And it just, it's been a saving mm-hmm. grace for me, to be honest with you. It's been a blessing that I didn't know until I, I thought I needed something that I knew that this is exactly what I needed in my life. Yes. You know, and that's the thing. We don't know what we need until we need it. And that whole idea of only, oh, let me just do it. Cause I'm, y'all know me. I don't like to show up for hardly anything unless I have to, but this <laughs> and having people at my house. Oh, really? <laughs> so Cheryl, <laughs> you know, you and I met through Laura and because of right. music, right. Is how yes. we knew her. And so after you and I talked and I was like, Hey, what do you think about being in this group? I mean, you didn't hesitate. So what was it for you? Uh, For me, it was that kindredness of sisters, like-minded people. It's been a safe place. 
a place where I could come and just let my face down yeah. and say whatever I wanted and know, know that it was going to stay right here. And then there's a time when you don't even say anything, but you know, it's like that warm feeling that you only get with special friends. Yeah. Um, right. So that that's what it's been for me. And I, I've mm -hmm. missed that we haven't been able to get together because it was yes. that one place where, you know, if the whole world is going to pot and hand basket, and As come here, it's gonna be good, and we're gonna laugh, yep. and we're gonna leave here energized. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that brings me that that leads into a great segue to joy, because when you talk about just a place you could take your face on and off and you just just be. I remember there was one I think it was at your house, Cheryl, and mm -hmm. your husband had cooked, which was awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember yes. At one point, you joy was down. Just exhausted. Yeah. She was just exhausted. Yeah. And I remember looking up and she was just on the couch, just laying there. And we were all just cool. It was like, you know what? She just needs a minute. And right. it was just good. So joy for you, because you, I mean, you've all been, we've all been going through some stuff, but joy, wow. you've had a lot. And oh, now wow. your own article in the Houston Chronicle, you know, you're on the page, <laughs> right? So what has it meant for you kind of to have that space? Um, you know, I'm in a very public job. And so um, because I'm a, a, a journalist with, uh, uh, you know, a, lar a large media organization. So people assume that I have a very social network and I'm very, that I'm out and about, that I get invited to things and, and, and I don't. And so the fact that a, this group of women, most of you who I didn't really know and wanted me to be a participate, I was all for it because I really don't get asked to, to participate in things like this. I don't because I think yeah. the assumption is, is that I'm already booked or I have this going on. And what people don't understand is like, I, I, I really don't, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. so um, it's, been, it's been, it's been wonderful because um, I needed a sense of connection that I did not have um, because my life is so busy and because a majority of my best friends do not live in this uh, city that um, I, I felt a real a, a void in my life in yeah. in terms yeah. of that having that connection and that's what it's meant for me. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And and I met you through Veronique. Yeah. So V, I'm going to go to you because of that connection. So that same kind of question to you as you think about you know being here and whether or not the assumptions people have about us and how visible we are or how active we are. And whether or not that's true and how that translates into this group and this connection. Well, I'm answering a little bit of that and a little bit of also going back that just knowing you were kind of the common denominator, I knew it was going to be good, whatever mm -hmm. it was. Um, so, and I love the fact that you're like the thread that kind of ties us all. Um, even though we all met and came to you separately, we all feel like we know one another. Mm -hmm. and way now I love the fact it's so rare that brown women lift each other up and celebrate each other's success which is unfortunate but it's yeah. fact and so every time I would talk about this group and every time I have talked about the group there's so much pride associated with it because yeah. there's no competition there's no envy there's no jealousy it is full support we may not have been able to see one another on a regular consistent basis due to covid but we've always been on, on a text chain. We've always mm -hmm. celebrate Joy's kids, Cheryl's successes, Dorothy's move. Um, and then we've all gone through things that aren't good. We've all mm -hmm. been through something that didn't need celebration. It needed right. the, it needed an ear. So it goes on both ends of the spectrum. And I love the fact that we are here after COVID, mm -hmm. even though we haven't been face to face every time. Yeah together when I was looking at the old pictures, we would laugh our heads off and we enjoyed some of the best <laughs> and locations. And I, I feel humbled and, on, and honored to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we can get back to the face-to-face, -face, you know, yeah. now that things are kind of tapering off a little bit with the pin. Yes. I, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. And, and Dorothy, I think about you because, you know, we met because Kim introduced us and then we're like, well, we can just meet for dinner. And I remember we met at Union Kitchen yes. up north. And then there was another sorority sister that was there. And so, you know, we've got that sisterhood in common, but it was like, 
I don't know. There was just something about the spirit that just happened. So, you know, what about for you kind of this connection? You know, it was instant chemistry. And I would say whenever you're moving into a different city, I think I had been into Houston maybe two or three months. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up your life and you move somewhere, um, you don't always have the ins and out of a city and who to go to for what. I mean, basic stuff like where to get my hair done, where to get my nails done, what, just the basic things. Yes. Uh, and I will say that, uh, Laurel, we started chit-chatting and it was always easy. You know how you yeah. meet someone and, and it's instant that there's no introduction <laughs> because you already have oh, that kindred, that spirit. And that's mm-hmm. what it was when we sat down for dinner. And then she's like, hey, can you do something? I want you to come to this meeting with these other women. And what I will say is, you know, ladies, we have been together through some se- seismic changes in the world. Yes, I mean, yes. think about when we were together when we found out that Kobe passed away. Yes. yes. That was yeah. yes. a time when we were having our sisterhood together, but also to realize that was a seismic shift. We talked about what happened with George Floyd. We, we've mm-hmm. navigated through the COVID uh, situation, but even before that, we were navigating through our jobs and through our lives yes. and yes. our children. Yeah. So I say that, you know, it was easy and in mm. my space and time now, I'm looking for easy, positivity, good energy, peace of mind. Yes. And that's yes. what this group really has brought because mm-hmm. uh, like Mary J said on the Super Bowl, no more drama, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> And so <laughs> that, that is what we yeah. never had to deal with that. So yeah. that was the yeah. blessing in meeting each and every one of you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cause we, there's enough drama outside, you know, and, Absolutely. and Lanier, I only, I only left you for last because, <laughs> because Lanier and I, we just seem to have this thing where we just keep like crossing paths. So, you know, we met and then I left and she left and then we came back together. And, and so for you, I, it was, It was one of those things where I'm like, of course, Lanier needs to be part of this group. Of course she does. And so I was so glad when you said yes. And so for you, what made you decide to do that? Well, you're right. Like it it seemed like we were destined to to land here. And I think again, like you guys all shared, I was just really coming off of some major life events, moving back home to Texas after a really Mm -hmm. um, traumatic family event. I think Laurel knew that was just what I needed. I started a new job. It was a scary job, you know, working for a very large chemical company in a role with no one at work and a lot going on personally. And, you know, you got to meet, you know, these women. Uh, This is where you belong. It's like I get to, you know, um, join this group of really phenomenal Black women that are doing the damn thing. Like, I get to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I, did, I, I think I, I meant the, you, you know, I think it was the last time we got together um, mm-hmm. on that Sunday when uh, Kobe died. Yes. And mm. uh, I, can't, I just couldn't believe it, even though that was such like um, a, a surreal moment, we yeah. still managed to just form this bond. Like I felt like I knew you guys my whole life and that yes. I never had this place where if I needed something, you know, I, I could go. I, I was part of the circle, like, mm-hmm. and yeah. even we had this this thing, this dark cloud. It was still one of the most special days of my life, and the last social event that I was able to attend before the yeah. pandemic. And it was yeah. like kind of kept me going through the pandemic because I'm an extrovert. I'm not like Laurel. It's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> And so through the pandemic, it's like one of the things that I look forward to was our next, you know, time mm-hmm. together, which here we yeah. are two years later, still when we get together. Yeah. yeah. And those text messages that would come through, you know, like when you, yeah. I, I, I lean on positivity. So I'm not one to yes. quick be the Debbie Downer. So there are lots of things that happen that I don't necessarily share. I'm just trying to, you know, figure out like, you know, where's the positivity in this. Right. But you guys would text something, you know, um, and it would let me know it's going to be okay. Yeah. Like I have yeah. somewhere I can go if I need to. Um, right. To right on time. So it's been, you know, one of the biggest blessings, you know, in my life since mm-hmm. I returned to Houston. And I'm just so thankful. Well, well, I tell you, I think that bread pudding, uh, the banana pudding helped us when Kobe <laughs> passed. <laughs> just kind of. 
you know, like they gave us yeah. all something to kind of lean into, right? <laughs> With it just, we just need a little sugar fix. And and I, I think what's important for you guys that are listening is that the common thread is that nobody on this call has a perfect life. We have all been through something. We're all constantly going through something, but this was a space where we didn't have to be on. And as black women, you always feel like you got to be on all the time, all the time. And so, you know, I, when I think about that and I think about how this circle came together and some of the things that we've been able to do and some of the things we've been able to, to really share, I really want to talk about next the power of celebrating where we've been and what we've done. So, you know, when our sister circles got together, we would always talk about like the last one we did our, our, um, our words, right. Our words for the year. And so we always talk about what is something that you're celebrating. Mm -hmm. And then what is something where you need some support? Mm -hmm. And so if we think about the stuff that we're celebrating, um, I want each of you to kind of think back and think about something that you shared with us. Cause one, I want people listening to hear how amazing you are. But think about something that you celebrated with us and you told us about and why you chose to share that with us. And so, Joy, I'm going to start with you. Oh, God. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, uh, this is just, um, it's probably the most recent. And um, it was something that I wasn't sure I should share with people because there's part of me that is still holding on to that. Keep yourself small and Mm -hmm. yourself, you know, so that you don't get the haters and everything. And I am, I am a introvert in an extrovert job. Mm -hmm. And so when, and this is just a text I sent you all that I uh, was nominated for the Pulitzer prize in commentary. Did y'all hear that? Are you listening? Pulitzer prize. Yay! Yes. We had already celebrated her. She's like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. <laughs> right? <laughs> she was like, oh, she's yes. nominated. We were like, no, you won. You won. <laughs> we know this already. We are claiming this for you, right? right? And so, but when you talk about that joy, you know, this, because I will claim I'm that too. I am an introvert and an extroverted job when I was in corporate, right? But what was it about this group that said, you know what? This is where I want to share that. This is where I want to celebrate that. Because I know how positive you all are. I mean, just, you know, even, you know, and, and I don't know, I, I feel like I've gotten to know m- most of you through this. I only knew V, um, yeah. really. And, you know, you like, like everyone has said, you want a group that really celebrates. And, you, you know, at this, at this, in my maturity, I, I am keenly aware when, there are people who are not really for me. Um, mm-hmm. and, and when you, you know, when you know those people who yeah. they say they're for you, but they're not really for you, yeah. you know? Yes. Yes. And yes. so, and I've done, and I've spent a lot of my younger years sharing and trying to connect and trying to be friends and trying to keep in my circle people who were for me, but weren't for me. Mm-hmm. And so this group, I just, uh, you know, it, 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 it feels like it, this is, you know, a team, all of us type of group. And, and I, and I just wanted to share that. And I didn't, and I, and I'm, I don't know if I'm embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. It's just, there's part, I, I don't toot my own horn, horn and I'm really bad at that. All, everybody who knows me knows that I am not good at that. Um, so I appreciate to have, be surrounded by people who remind me that I need to toot my own horn. So (laughs) step into that black girl magic, honey. Yes, Yes, girl. I read the text, but I got goosebumps when you said it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You said it just now, like I got goosebumps. And we, I would think we all read the text and celebrated. Yes. Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah. But it feels, it it does feel different, right? When you say it out loud. Right. Like mm-hmm. I'm tearing up. I, I just, yeah. I'm, I yeah. can't wait. Well, I you, you know, and you know what, what's so crazy is that you all have, I mean, like you said, we've all been through something and I mm-hmm. started the pandemic wanting to quit my job. 
Like yes, I was yes. like, I'm done. I, I, need to, I need to get out of this. I, you know, I'm, I've, I've done all I could do. Yeah. And, you know, George Floyd changed the trajectory of my career. Um, oh, I'm yes. now a columnist writing about race and single parenthood and pandemic issues. And, mm-hmm. and here I am. So it's just, yeah, yeah, it's been pretty amazing. So. I love it. I love it. And mm-hmm. Cheryl? <laughs> Well, actually, I think it's kind of the other way. You all have been the support. I didn't necessarily say when I got on various commercials, but each time someone would see it and just the support and love and the cheering me on. Um, We know if we go back a year or two from now uh, ago, I was trying to be a host. Yeah. And I was running around interviewing people. I was trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do here in Houston? How do I use my creativity? And Mm -hmm. um, the Lord made it so that we moved to California. And I said, well, it's really time to go for everything that is within me that I know that I can do. And the support that you all have said, yes, you could do it. Yes, you could do it. Uh, I actually even thought about, well, do I go back to corporate America? And yes. Laurel was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, really? We had this phone call. She was like, uh, no, no. Not the answer. And, <laughs> and I'm so glad that I stayed my ground. But just a little text when you say that you've seen it or how you yes. doing, be saying how are you doing, what's going on. That, that's that been the biggest thing. Because I haven't put on here, oh, I booked another commercial. I booked that. Yeah, It's been you all coming back and say, girl, keep going. You're killing it. Right. You're killing it. Like you, Viola Davis, behind your back. For real. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it really feels that way. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, I haven't put anything out there other than you all know the struggle that I was going through about mm-hmm. two years ago on, yeah. okay, which way yes. do I go? Um, and now I'm really glad that I've gone this path. And yes. I thank you for all that support. Yeah. And y'all keep your eyes open for oh, yeah. Cheryl Vienna. She's out there. Kathy, what about you? Oh, man, I hearken back to that time. You asked you all probably remember where I had about a year where my work life was absolute hell. There's no other way to describe it. And the things that I got out of it, there were two that that are just very, very clear to me. First and foremost, it was nice to be able to go in and say, this is what I think is happening and have you all clarify it and validate it because there was a tendency Mm -hmm. to want to instantly doubt. Did I, did I really, was it, is this, and you all, I didn't even have to spell it out a hundred percent. And then what I got back was, oh my God, all of my feelings are valid. And it's interesting Mm -hmm. because I was, as I was listening to Joy, I was remarking on how we have identical personalities, you know, that introvert in the extrovert job, the person Mm -hmm. who doesn't ever want to bring the limelight on themselves, but shines it on everybody. I just was sitting here going, oh my God, that's me. Oh my, we're like, (laughs) um, you know, by separate mothers. I don't know how that works out, but it worked out for us. And so, but it's the same thing, but I listened to that. And the second thing was being able and Laurel, I will never, ever be able to convey how much it meant to be, I'm sorry, for me to be able to just lean on you at that moment to help me with mm-hmm. my language and my phrasing right. and cool. to get a sense of, you know, your tactic here is coming along as this. And I don't think that's what you intend. So, I yeah. mean, to be able to bounce that off of you and sort of lay myself bare and right. feel perfectly comfortable saying, these are all the things that are happening this is my role in these things help me Mm -hmm. move forward help me survive this and to know that even no matter the outcome I felt like you were just in my back pocket the whole way going no 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 go right go right right no no a little bit a little bit you know constantly saying you know you've got this and so it was an opportunity to stop doing what I normally do which is as Joy said make myself small in my mm-hmm. work environment so that I don't fit into that stereotype of, you know, you know, yes. the angry black woman boat rocker, you know, so yeah. I'm just that person who, because it's not me, but we do have a yeah. tendency to pull back in. So I, I love that group dynamic of, of having you all get me, but I really, really appreciate it all the time. Cause I know that was extra yeah. work I put on your plate with you helping me flesh out my thoughts and make it yeah. actually what I wanted to say in the way that it needed mm-hmm. to be said. Well, that's what we do, right? That's what sisters do. And, and y'all, just so you know, I mean, Kathy is at 
an, an incredible institution, an institution I actually have heartburn with. So in full disclosure, um, because that's where I met her. We were actually roommates at one point, but this woman has been there, what, 30 years now? Kathy? 40 years, 40. Oh, right? Jesus. Wow. And, what? and look, let me tell you something. Years. I know from personal oh. experience, personal experience, there are students of color that would not have made it at that institution yes. if this woman was not there. You hear me? Mm -hmm. So, and that's not about Thank you. just patting somebody on the back and, you know, just being a sound of She's that too, but it is truly someone who understands what advocacy is and what yes. sponsorship is is and knows how to call people on the carpet around the mess. So I'm telling you guys, all of these people you're going to be listening to on my podcast, these are women who are killing it. These are women who are killing it. And and just I I I'm just telling you, go go <laughs> see. So Lanier, <laughs> for you, what is the thing that you think about, you know, in terms of of celebration? I know I've got one for you, but I'm gonna let you, you know. <laughs> so so I have a a few, you know, I would say, you know, if I, if I look to the personal, because you've met me at those times where I think, you know, one of our first heart to hearts was, you know, do you better call me off this ledge or I'm a jump. And right. I, decided I would jump. <laughs> yes. And don't look you back. Um, and, you know, corporate America is not for everyone and mm -hmm. definitely not for every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, I, I've, I've landed in the, in the right place and I, and I do celebrate that. I celebrate the growth and the opportunities that I have right now. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be, but, you mm -hmm. know, from the, the personal side, my, you know, the reason why I moved back to Houston is because of, you know, the tragedy um, that, and I say tragedy, the tragedy that happened to my family that, you know, um, I, my brother is, is recovering and he is, you know, he, he has been blessed. We have been tremendously yeah. blessed and I'm so thankful for that. And, um, that Sunday that we met, um, you know, we chose a word, we made our boards. It's, it's yeah. on my, um, chest of drawers yeah, in my bedroom. And when I wake up <laughs> and I see it and my word was immersion, I was going to immerse yes. myself in life every day. And I've done that every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and even when I was locked in the house and didn't know what I was going to do, um, <laughs> I painted stuff and yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It just that God, God is good. And I do, I still yeah. can you know, continue to uh, immerse myself in life. And he is, you know, um, I wouldn't say fully recovered, but um, yeah. We're yeah, I love that. I love that. And Dorothy, cause you had a few things happen too, to celebrate. Mm -hmm. as we were getting together yeah yeah well you know you guys have navigated me through some life events I mean mm -hmm. to move to Houston and then have to quit my job and move home to take care of my mom I'm in Tennessee and mm -hmm. uh, we are in that space where we are having kids and we're having our parents and right I an honor that I had the resources to leave a job and move home to my childhood home and take care of my mother who has several debilitating um uh illnesses and she's bedridden mm -hmm. and um any day is is we can be but the fact that i can see her every single day yeah. it's a blessing yes. yeah. it's a mm -hmm. blessing and and then the other thing so i call that a joy that's i'm humbled yes. I'm, I'm honored to be here um but also my daughter going off to berkeley i mean yes um that was wonderful. And I had the, the wonderful opportunity to hang out with Miss Cheryl Vienna. And yeah. there. <laughs> look at how this sister circle just yes. from yes. Houston to San Francisco. And we right? had yeah. fun uh, <laughs> in all of that. <laughs> um, but we had a fantastic time and, yeah. and just to be able to share that moment with her, you know, uh, and then being back home. And so just life events you know, they mm -hmm. happen and to have the support, like I said, we may not talk, but our tech strand yeah. is strong. And, uh, I never feel like any of you are not just a call away. You know, right. I feel very much connected. Um, even though we haven't really, uh, spent the, the day to day yeah. time together, but I know if I needed you, you would show up. Yes. And that's what's important, you know, at yeah. the end of the day. And I'm all about being a minimalist right now. 
Mm -hmm. I am not trying to create a whole lot of new conversations and people who don't have my best interests at hand. I feel you. I feel you. And I feel like this is one group (laughs) that I want to put the effort towards. I want yes. to I mean, because like I said, it's no drama. We support each other mm-hmm. and that's some fun. I mean, we can talk about anything, you know? Yes. And uh, it's always positive, fun, good food and drink. Yeah. And, it, that's yes. <laughs> and drink. Yeah. That's why it's called <laughs> chat and chill. <laughs> Chill, chilled glass, right? <laughs> the important is the necessary uh, requirement for this group. <laughs> exactly, exactly. V, what about you? Oh, gosh. Celebrations. I love what everybody just said. Um, one thing I was going to say, just touching on everybody's, is I danced professionally for 15 years, and people would think, like Kathy and Joy were just saying, that I would be an extrovert but I would much rather be behind the scene than in front of the camera. So Mm -hmm. because you dance that you always want to be the center of attention. And that is not true at all. (laughs) Yes. Um, So that was one. And then the other I was going to say is that we have all experienced some level of loss during the time we've been together, work related, family related, relationship related, but we have also experienced some level of gain also in the time Mm -hmm. together. Uh, one thing that I shared touching on your question, Laurel, was um, I've shared my dramatic experiences at work and <laughs> to say the least. Hey. So COVID, I just, I feel like, like a little cheerleading squad, really. Yeah. And it just um, encouraged me because looking at you guys are all like boss. Can I say bitches on here? Right. <laughs> yes. It's my podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just so inspired by every single face on this screen. I mean, beyond for all different reasons. And I was like, gosh, COVID was an opportunity for me to be like, okay, instead of complain about it, be about it and pivot. So I started my own company. Um, but I will say that I read something in my um, when I was journaling this morning that made me think of something I want to share. When we were sitting here, it said, um, it talked about starting again and not, you know, you know, you can be knocked out, knocked down, but not knocked out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Boxers and it says boxers are not disqualified when they fall. They're disqualified when they don't get back up. Right. Oh, that's good. And I heard, I read that today and I wrote that in my journal. That's so true. You are not disqualified if you fall. And, mm-hmm. you've, and we've all, I'm sure, can share a level of failure. Been falling. Yeah. yeah. Share a level of excitement and success and victory. Um, but it just made me realize because what Joy was saying about not, you know, I've always not wanted to like celebrate myself because mm-hmm. the people in your circle don't want to truly celebrate you. Right. And, or they like to see you almost broken or yeah. mm-hmm. with we some level of loss, but mm-hmm. when you start to do something a little, and even if it's great and grand to you, they, yeah. it's like they're. It, it, you almost don't feel like you can share it. I've never felt like I couldn't share something with this mm-hmm. group. And I knew that whatever said, it stayed right in this group here. Yes. It, it would never go anywhere else. I still feel that way. I remember mm-hmm. Joy's house when, you know, we go to her house and hang out and, you know, Dorothy, um, her experiences and to have two people on the mm-hmm. screen who don't even live in the city anymore. So right. Yeah, you know that it's not like okay, we moved, we can't be part of the group anymore. You gotta Mm -hmm. be out of this gang. We're just (laughs) right. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yes, you've got to be authorized to leave. leave. (laughs) (laughs) And we're not really good about adding people either. You know, (laughs) (laughs) we would open on, but we said that's it. That's it. Closed. Yeah, closed. You can join the waiting list. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and and I think that that's like a perfect segue because because what I want to ask next, because again, this whole idea of of women coming together and in particular black women coming together and being supportive and having that place where what's said here stays here, 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 right? And you can really just be vulnerable. What would you say, like the the one piece of advice you would give, and I'll go around again, the one piece of advice you would give to people, especially if you think about mid to later career, 
right? So not necessarily folks who are just learning and they're out and about and trying to meet people, but mid to later career women who are still just trying to, to navigate. I mean, it doesn't stop when you're 20, right? You're still right. trying to navigate. What would you give to somebody, the advice you would give to somebody about finding their sister circle, right? Finding that group of people. Lanier, I'll start with you. So I would say to my younger self, it's a small circle. It's a small circle and that you surround yourself with people who keep it real. I think yes. that's, the, that's the magic of this circle. You know, you mm-hmm. said it, you know, when we started, we can be who we are. So you should never um, settle or pretend or, you know, mm-hmm. and you surround yourself with people, not people who always tell you how grand you are or how grand they are. Keep it real and yeah. keep it tight because the wait list for this circle is going to be, a, <laughs> I don't think anybody's leaving. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. I love that's really good. Keep it tight and keep it small. Keep it real. I love that. Joy, what about you? You know, I think, I think the sister circle circle works because we all are at a certain age too. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you're in your twenties, there's a whole, there's a level of competition that women tend to have with each other. Um, and it makes it difficult for really getting deep and really keeping it honest and real. Um, and I think it's possible, but I just think they're a little, they're a little bit more challenge. It's a little bit more challenging at that particular age. Cause I look back and, you know, it was pretty simple. You just want to, you know, go hang out a happy hour and, you know, but at, a- after a certain point, you want some real honest conversations and you want to feel like you're heard um Mm -hmm. that um you are a good listener and you're listening and um you know that that you give each other what you know emotionally what we need and I think that's just support so yeah I don't don't know if I'm answering the question I just um I think it's a little bit different now than yeah we're in a sister circle in my 20s you know what I mean I think it'd be I think that's perfect yeah no I think that's perfect because I think we can't look for the same thing that we no. looked for before because that's right. not going to work right yeah. right it's not going to work it's not that it's bad it's just that no. that time has passed right and I don't think we would have that's known what we really would have yeah exactly of, you know or, yeah. exactly what would you say V um I would say the you know I was it seems like an easy answer to say be transparent and be vulnerable that sounds easy but you can't be transparent you can't be vulnerable if you don't feel safe so right. um, Laurel and I know someone that would always say, you only cry in front of people where you feel safe mm-hmm. and seen. And so if you think about it, you know, mm-hmm. tear ducts almost won't work if you don't feel like you can cry in front of someone. And mm-hmm. so it's like our tear ducts have feelings, like they know yeah. it's safe to express that. Yeah. And um I think it takes a level of maturity, safety, knowing yourself um, Mm -hmm. and knowing I can only speak for myself. I know I am perfectly imperfect and flawed. And so, and I know that I've experienced a lot of, you know, hurt in my life and it's caused me hopefully to be more um, empathetic of others, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, So that can't happen is what Joy was saying. I don't know if we even know enough about ourselves and our yeah. to even relate. So to be able at this juncture at our age mm-hmm. is to be able to still know that even though we're all different, we come from back different backgrounds, we are we do have something that we can all share and relate to. Yes. Right. It mm-hmm. just comes down to being vulnerable and being transparent. I don't think you can I love that. bond with anyone if you're not transparent. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Cheryl, what about you? Well, I'm nodding my head with these said knowing yourself is very, very important because yeah. you can't attract other people unless you know yourself or what you're yes. attracting just may not be for you. And it takes a while for you to Preach. understand. <laughs> 
<laughs> what you are attracting. Yes. And that's yes. you. You've got to get down within your soul and know mm-hmm. this is me. And then mm-hmm. you can branch out and you attract those people that have that same mm-hmm. energy, um, mm-hmm. that same synergy, even mm-hmm. though you all have, we all have different careers. Like you said, we mm-hmm. have different lifestyles, but we've all had a path that's taken us to this place that has allowed us yeah. to see our inner selves and yeah. know what type of people we want to be around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Dorothy, what about you? I think that um, one of the most powerful things about this group is that we support each other changing, growing, and developing. You mm-hmm. know, you want to be with a group that's going to support different is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yes. Change is good, it's good. Mm-hmm. you know, and all of us have gone through some level of change, but what we've done very well is we've supported each other through the change, yeah. whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, our kids, our jobs, uh, our relationships, and mm-hmm. you need to find a group and granted, I, I hear you about safety and vulnerability, yeah. but sometimes we need that little push, you know, that little, yeah. little oh yeah you know, to say go that that you don't want okie dokie friends that just yeah say, okay. you need the honesty you need the honesty yeah, <laughs> yeah. The honesty. you know don't, don't bring me no stray cats i don't want no stray yeah. cats <laughs> no, sir. no sir you don't no, want no chinese no. dinners <laughs> i'm real particular so, right you know so i think you know having that group of ladies who can say change is good and yeah. then giving you the support you need to go ahead and take that next step for the unknown. Yes. And yes. that to me, um, in my younger self, I would say, you know, as I, I mentor and coach younger ladies, I say, it's okay to leave. It's yes. okay to leave. You know, mm-hmm. fear keeps us staying in unhealthy mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Fear of not making the money and fear of not being loved or fear right. of whatever Good enough. girl mm-hmm. keeps us right now in our, mm-hmm. in our uh, spaces that are not the in our best interest so right. when you change that mm-hmm. and god then blesses you amen girl amen. they say what do they say if you're not moving forward if you're standing in place backwards so comfort is not always the best thing. No, it's not. Right. It's not. not by surprise. Nothing takes not God, by surprise. Mm. Take God by surprise. He orchestrates. Right. You know, he yeah. uses all right, the, now. the conduit, but we are all where we are mm-hmm. in each other's lives for a reason. Yeah. I've Absolutely. seen some beautiful things happen with the ladies, and I've um, been able to witness some amazing things, memories that I'll take yeah. her with joy. And so it's like, I mean, it's just so beautiful to see someone that had a dream. Yeah. And get to witness it realized is probably oh, yes. that you could ever be given. On. Yeah, I love it. Well, and Kathy, I'll end with you just because well, I've known you it, for the longest. Well, it also just echoes a lot of what Cheryl and Dorothy just said, because my my idea for finding I mean, if I were to advise somebody, how do you mm-hmm. find your, your sister circle? Mm-hmm. It would start with this inner reflection. You have to reflect mm-hmm. on yourself. What is it that you need? Yeah. What is it that you're lacking? What do you want out of a group like this? And then I'd have mm-hmm. to mirror what Dorothy said, because you can't be afraid to walk away if it doesn't yes. work. I was in a, a invited to a sister circle uh, in the 80s, back in the 80s. Yes. I think I was in my 20s and mm-hmm. walked in and I may have the decades wrong, but walked in at a time where <laughs> in the first two meetings that I went to, we had a disagreement about Michael Tyson. And then we had a disagreement about Clarence Thomas. Oh, and, oh. and at the end of that, <laughs> you know, little progressive me, very feminist me sitting here going what the hell (laughs) literally never went back didn't connect with any so I had to be brave enough to say thank you for inviting me but this is not my group of women and And let's just know you will never use those two names in a sentence again (laughs) I know I know but I literally had, I had to run away yes. and just sort of divorce myself from that entire yeah. group of women, because I realized that was going to bring me to a point where I was just 
boiling hot every yes. time I met with them. And I did right. not feel like it speaks freely. I did not feel like I was in a safe space. So it definitely mirrors what's been said before. Reflect on what you need, go find it. And if it doesn't work, don't be afraid to go. Afraid Thank to you. Me. But Absolutely. Yes. It just didn't yeah. work for me. Yeah. Find right. your peeps, yeah. man. Find your peeps. Find your peeps. Find your peeps. <laughs> I I tell, tried. Right. <laughs> well, and I tell you, you know, one of the reasons when I, I don't know why this came to me again, divine download, right? Because we've been together long enough that I, everybody says, you know, plan it out, plan out your content. Okay. My brain just doesn't work that way. It just, something has to happen and it just comes. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to talk about. And it just hit me as women's history month was coming. I'm like, I am so blessed to have these groups of women that have come into my life at different times and some crossover, right? There's some crossover in some of them, but have come into, into my life at different times that just, just feed me, that just really feed me. And, and I know me and I know I'm a little odd, right? I know that I could stay in my house forever. I know that I love words. I know that people using the wrong word makes me crazy. I know, you know, I know these kind of things about myself. I know me. And the fact that I have these amazing, incredible, I mean, you heard them. Wait till you read their bios. Uh, The fact that I have these amazing women who bless me with their time and allow me to just be me, even when being me is a little odd or a little irritating. (laughs) We love you. It's just a beautiful thing. And so when you you are listening to this, wherever you are, whoever you are, give yourself the gift of one, getting to know who you are. And then two, finding those people, finding that small village, you know, you heard it here, keep it small, keep it tight, make sure you can be safe, make sure it's not people are just going to blow smoke, make sure you know who you are, make sure it's somebody who can celebrate you, find that group that can do that. And if it's not that group, leave them in love, keep it moving, keep it moving. It is okay. It is okay. Ladies, I, I have no words. I have, well, oh, I have, Laura, words, I have, I have one, one thing. Yes, go oh, ahead, Dorothy. You left out a very important piece. Yes. Find women who can cook. Right. <laughs> Girl, oh, wait, we don't yes. want no bad food. Yeah, how am I in this the... group then? I don't understand <laughs> how I got in here. Oh, yes. I don't know why I'm here <laughs> either. <laughs> I mean, come on now. You know, Y'all know that was a store-bought Kroger chicken, right? You know, that was clear, right? <laughs> and you can provide because... I don't remember any bad all... food. I don't remember any oh, bad food. No, we always were centered around yes. food and cocktails and yes, it very easy for us to be connected. So yes. and, and you need to be the one with the young kids so you don't have to ask <laughs> <laughs> when you have young kids. You know, like, like, you get to bring the plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed we to get to bring late. the plates. You're cook. allowed to not cook. You're allowed oh, to yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, and again, find that group where you can just be who you are, Absolutely. wherever you are in your life at the time. That's where the power is, right? That's where the power is. And so we are, ladies, going to find a time for us to get together again soon. I want to thank y'all so much. Yes, Seth, yeah. thank you so much for being on the podcast with me this week. I, it is just, um, it is such a blessing to me and such an honor. And so Cheryl, Cheryl Vienna, watch for her on our podcast. Yay. Getting ready to kill it, girl. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Dorothy, keep us posted. Give your mom big hugs for us. Yeah. Joy, I know. Bless your heart. You got a lot going on, you know, with those two little ones. But we are waiting for this. She makes it look easy. She makes it right. I got my Pulitzer Prize. Getting, <laughs> collect the trophy dress yes, ready. Yes, and we'll Lanier, just, just don't let them get to you, honey. Just girl, you know, don't let them both keep them you. in line. Keep them in line. I think you and need Kathy. to worry about the people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they need to worry about you. Right? <laughs> yes. And Kathy, please keep oh, just keep doing what you're doing because those We're kids trying. need you. They yeah. need yeah. to know you're that there they have a safe space there. there thank you guys. Whoever's tuning in, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you're listening, I encourage you to go to my website to actually see the video and see these amazing women and watch their, their responses and to read their great stories. I will catch you next time on the Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> You've been watching the Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. 
If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to the Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.